pleasant greetings to you. Happy Feast of Christ the King. Today, let us talk about what it means to be a king. First, let me share with you a story of a king. Once upon a time, there was a king with four wives. One day, the king got sick and was on his deathbed. Afraid of being in the afterlife alone, he asked his fourth wife, which he loved the most, and bought her diamonds and gold and elegant clothing. He asked her, would you die with me and go with me to the afterlife? The fourth wife replied, I'm sorry, I can't do that, and walked away. He also loved his third wife and was very proud and would always show her off to neighboring kingdoms. So he called on his third wife and asked, Would you accompany me to the afterlife? The third wife replied, I love my life too much and I'm sorry I cannot go with you. And when you die, I'm going to remarry. His second wife has always been there for him in his times of need. So he asked, would you accompany me to the afterlife? The second wife then replied, I'm sorry that I can't help you out this time, but what I can do is arrange your funeral and I will be there for your funeral. A voice called out and said, I'll leave with you and follow you wherever you go, even if it is to the afterlife. And the king looked and it was his first wife. But this was the wife that he took care of the least felt embarrassed and said, I'm sorry, I should have taken more care of you and given you more attention when I was alive. The moral of this story is that we all have four wives. Our fourth wife is our body. We like to decorate it with nice jewelry, nice clothing, but in the end, it can't follow us to the afterlife. The third wife represents our possessions. We spend so much time trying to gather possessions, but in the end, they cannot follow us to the afterlife. It will be given to other people and divided. Just like the third wife said, she's going to remarry. The second wife, our friends and family. We trust them. They're always there for us in times of need. But the furthest they can go with us is to our funeral and send us off. Our first wife, the first wife represents our soul. We usually neglect taking care of our soul. That is the thing that will follow us to the afterlife. Care for your body, keep it healthy, enjoy your possessions and the comfort they provide. Cherish your friends and family for the love that they provide. But don't forget to take care of your soul, nourish your soul, Take time to be alone, take time to pray, take time to meditate because it is the source of all of your life and your most faithful friend. You know, we are kings and you know, being called to kingship is being knowledgeable. Please know who God is in your personal life as your personal God and Savior. Read the scriptures, attend your Sunday celebrations faithfully, and seek Him in your personal prayers and in our daily thoughts. Being called to kingship is being intelligent. Please spend some time in personal reflection on what you hear being preached and being taught. Please sharpen your spiritual quotient being called to kingship is being needful of God. A child of the king makes others realize their need for the Father's kingly love. Being needful of His divine mercy is another consequence of being a king. Being called to kingship is being generous. Please think globally and act locally. You know, we tend to do otherwise, the opposite. We think locally and then we act globally. That is why we tend to spread ourselves too widely and yet 
to Simli. Please be reminded to give as you can, not as you can't. Let us be maximalists. Be a gimper. Have a do and give more attitude. Develop an eye for the least and have an I am the least attitude. You know, humility is the door to all the virtues, especially towards being charitable. Being called to kingship is finally being a servant leader. Father Henry J. M. Lewen said, Servant leadership is a leadership which is not modeled on the power games of the world, but on the servant leader, Jesus, who came to give his life for the salvation of many. So, we are called to be kings. This is being knowledgeable. This is being intelligent, being needful of God, being generous, and being a servant leader. Let us give this some kingly thought. Lesson Christian by Bob Rowland I was hungry, and you formed a humanities club, and discussed my hunger. Thank you. I was imprisoned, and you crept off quietly to your chapel in the cellar, and prayed for my release. I was naked and in your mind, you debated the morality of my appearance. I was sick, and you knelt and thanked God for your health. I was homeless, and you preached to me about the spiritual shelter of the love of God. I was lonely, and you left me alone to pray for me. You seem so holy, so close to God, but I'm still very hungry, and lonely, and cold. So where have your prayers gone? What have they done? What does it profit a man to page through his book of prayers when the rest of the world is crying for help? May God bless your kingly hearts. Amen. <laughs>